So here it is. A return to form to the classic Michi Major format from six months ago. No usage of webcams, no LED lights in the background, just pure daylight with me talking to the DSLR in, from, in front of an image that's relevant to the video on the monitor in the background, for the most part. For the most part. There's times where I'll just use a plain galaxy image as the wallpaper instead, but what better way to get back to that style than with a my thoughts on the Black Ops Cold War Zombies reveal? Because Black Ops Cold War is a game I'm actually looking forward to. It's the most I've looked forward to um, to a COD game in quite a while, and when I mean a while, I mean years at this point. Like, many years. Uh, Modern Warfare 2019 would be up there, but the whole loot box, survival mode um, situation, controversy and whatnot from last year sort of killed that. Even though half of that got reversed, it still killed a lot of the excitement. But that's besides the point. Anyways, here we are with some new Zambies in Kawa Duty. And I think why I'm excited for this is because, for me, this is going to be the first proper Treyarch COD experience in five years. I think I said that before in a previous video. I didn't get Black Ops 4 because of all the greedy anti-consumer bullshit they were pulling with that game with the Black Ops Pass and the lack of campaign, which I get has to do with development issues behind the scenes, but still, a Call of Duty game without a campaign just feels really off to me. Like, it, it's, it's extremely cursed to me, and I don't like it one bit. It makes me extremely uncomfortable. And, um, to be frank... Woods with you. Ah ha ha, get it? Because his name is Frank Woods. And to be frank is something people say. Ah ha ha, explaining the joke makes it not funny. Shut the fuck up. Anyways, so this is going to be the first proper Treyarch experience, which means the first proper Treyarch Zombies experience in five years or so. I I'm aware that there was, um, uh, fucking inf Infinite Warfare Zombies, which I never touched. I, I played the Infinite Warfare campaign and played the um, actual launch multiplayer of Infinite Warfare when the game came out because I licensed transferred the game on Xbox One through a friend's account so I could play it myself because I didn't want to buy it and I thought fig and I, I just thought, fuck it, why not? So I did download it that way and I just skipped the zombies because I just wasn't interested. And then from there, I finally got around to World War II Zombies like in July of this year when that was the first time I ever played World War II. Like, th there was an actual um, online public match I was able to find for zombies and multiplayer on, on the Steam version of COD World War II. Well, to be fair, it makes sense that there would be a population because of Humble Bundle and all that, and that's how I got it as well, which I finally got around to playing um, earlier this year. Anyways, um, I played that once, and that was boring as shit. I left the match because it was a public lobby and I never touched it again since and I have no plans to because it was boring as fuck. But going into this game, when they first teased it with um, the teaser, that 10 second-ish long teaser at the end of the multiplayer trailer, it gave me major World War II vibes which was very concerning because like I just said, the shit was boring as fuck and I don't want more of that boring shit because it seems that Sledgehammer definitely has a... Uh, a hand in this considering the like 1,000 developers that they have working on this game. There's like a thousand fucking teams working in it, like five teams on the campaign, 20 teams on the multiplayer. And then like the other 970 teams on the zombies, which would explain why there's a lot of multiplayer crossovers, which is something I'm getting into here. So um, now on to the actual part you know, the Zombies trailer itself. Um, for the most part, I I'm still looking forward to Zombies. I would definitely say for the most part, but I do have my concerns. Like, it it's cool to see that they're bringing some nostalgia into this. Yes, it's a new story, but it's still in, it it's still in the Ether universe, as it's referred to. But it's a brand new storyline at the same time that takes place after the old one. So it's all still canon, it's just you don't need to play the old storyline to understand this one. And this is the best way to approach it. Even though I didn't play Black Ops 4, I did do my research in it with, like, especially zombies and the storyline with that. Because it's something that's always interested me, you know, with Primus and Ultimus and all those fucking characters and the whole fucking clusterfuck of a story that 
this, that the plot in Ether became with like three and onwards. Like, wh what is happening here? What happened to the moon blowing up? Why is this not relevant anymore? But anyways, that's been ranted on by the community plenty of times. Um, so yeah, like it seems like they're definitely going back to that more nostalgic, down-to-earth, grounded style that was more present in World of War and Black Ops 1 Zombies. Thank God, because in terms of storytelling, when it comes to Treyarch games, World of War and Black Ops 1 absolutely had my favorite. I just love that mystery element to the old-school storytelling of Treyarch Zombies. It's just... It always made you question and think about shit like, what does this mean? What is the point of all these radios? What, what is the point of all these messages? Element 115, is that how the zombies came to be? Who are all these characters? Where did all these different types of zombies come from? Oh shit, this is how it all ties together. Oh, that's cool. And it just lost that coolness factor over time, which I get makes sense as things get revealed and more things happen, you know, more events are established within a within a canon and storyline to make sense of things, especially one that probably didn't have all that much planning from the very start. Um, but I, I think that they did go way too overboard with all the, like, alien shit in, in 3 and 4, like, like all these different godlike entities and beings. It, 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 it just became too much. It lost what made it originally great. At least in my opinion, and it seems like they're going back to something more grounded, and I, I just think that's nice to see. And something else that's definitely going to be nostalgic is Noct. Noct. Uh, I, I feel like any word that isn't English, I'll always fuck up or butcher in some way, regardless of whether or not I actually did butcher it or not. But it's cool to see that the OG first ever zombies map is going to be involved in some way. Um. Again, just going back to Black Ops 4, even though I didn't play it again, something that was definitely a criticism of that zombies um, mode that I'm aware about in the community was recycling maps and remakes and lack of originality with brand new maps released. Um, I hope that Noct being in this map like, in some way, isn't a sign that's gonna happen again. You know, I'm not speaking for myself. This is more so for the zombies community. Like, that actually did touch BO4. You know, th this is more so me talking, I guess, for them in a way, which, you know, I I'm just trying to relate and understand where they come from because clearly the mode faced a lot of criticism for a reason. And, um, all in all, like I said, I'm looking forward to it, but something that's definitely a concern for me is, um, score streaks. Score streaks and zombies is a little worrying because with that being a multiplayer thing, now it's being brought into zombies. I feel like that's going to really take away like a lot of the whole point of killing zombies with guns. And speaking of that, introducing loadouts and not just having a pistol as the only weapon anymore. I don't know how to feel about that because something I've always loved about COD Zombies was the way that you would start out with basically nothing. You would just have a simple M1911 pistol, and from there you'd unlock room after room, you'd eventually find the power, you'd find Pack-a-Punch, the mystery box, and you'd come across all different types of weapons, a huge assortment from the wall weapons to, again, the mystery box, and from there you upgrade those weapons, and then... In the case of later games, like, double pack them, as it's called. And just, you know, building up your arsenal as you further progress each round. And having all these weapons available through loadouts at the very beginning, I don't know how to feel about that. But considering the way they were talking about how you can upgrade regular weapons in this game, maybe all the standard weapons that you um, start each match with will be extremely weak, but as you upgrade them, that's when they actually feel somewhat special and meaningful. And if that's the case, then that'll be interesting to see, but I still do have my my concerns regardless. And um, another thing that definitely worries me is the characters that we play as. Like, it seems that we're playing as the campaign characters for this, which is cool. You know, I'm happy that they aren't bringing back the old cast. That, that storyline is done with, let them rest. They, they don't need to be brought back. They've served their purpose in the plot. Like, let them rest. Um, introducing campaign characters is fine. 
I just hope that these characters actually feel essential to the plot outside of just quote relating to the zombies and killing them. Because a part of what made the Aether storyline so cool in past games was just how essential these characters that you were playing as were to the overall plot. Like, the character Richtofen, this character that you're playing as, like, he's funny and all that, but he has relevance to the plot. He's extremely important and that that's a part of what makes it so easy to be invested in him. I'm hoping that we don't lose that element with these campaign characters and it's still there in some form. And I, I'm hoping that Treyarch really knows what they're doing with this new plotline because the last time they tried it, it didn't really work out so well. But considering this time around, it takes place in the same universe as the old storyline, hopefully it'll turn out for the better. And I do think this is the best way to go about it because, like I said, it's, it's, it's familiar, but it's fresh at the same time. It has some old school elements, but it feels new and it feels like a different experience at the same time. And I really like that they're really bringing the 80s themes, the 80s theme into this because as time went on with zombies, it became less focused on the setting of the game and more so just whatever the fuck the story wanted to be. And the fact that they're actually, again, sticking to something so grounded and sticking to a consistent setting with consistent weapons relevant to that setting is so nice to see because... Man, don't get me wrong, Black Ops 3 weapons were fun, but they got boring as fuck real quick. They got so boring so fast. That was the best thing about custom zombies in Black Ops 3, being able to use weapons from previous games. Yes, Black Ops 1 weapons were pretty shit, but those weapons being shit is what made them fun. That's why they were enjoyable. Because when you got the actual good weapons, they actually felt special in a way. It actually felt like, hey, I have something actually useful. So I'm hoping that we get more of that from Black Ops 1 because that, that was a part of the fun of it. That made it more challenging and interesting. And um, I'm hoping for some really fun wonder weapons, you know, some more of that thunder gun action. The thunder gun was incredible. And of course the ray gun's back. That's a staple in zombies as everyone knows. And I'm just really hoping that we do get custom zombies in some way. Maybe a, zop, uh, a map editor. Just something. Because they did mention something that's going to be in this mode. They didn't, they didn't say what it was, but something is going to be happening. And another thing that they brought up, which I'm actually cool with and I really like, is um, the exfil feature where instead of just um, the game ending by dying, you can actually escape it. I think that's cool. It's a cool um, way to keep things interesting. It doesn't affect the mode too much, but for those who want a different spin on a way to end a match, you get it, but with a twist, with a catch of zombie spawns being turned up to 11. I like that. And something else which I'm a little mixed about is how they're handling perks. I guess no longer is there going to be a four perk option. Now you can have as many as you want, which one part of me is saying that's awesome because that, that relieves all restrictions for perks. But on the other hand, I'm sad about that because I like the restrictions because it made it more, I guess, intense in a way because with, with there only being four perk slots, it meant that you were limited in options because if you had like six to eight perks on a map, you could only choose four of them. And you got to really pick and choose which ones you want unless you go down and respawn. And then from there, you can get some different perks. But of course, um, the one perk everyone is absolutely getting is Juggernaug with that being back and all. Ooh, some other things I definitely got to praise about Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Crossplay, cross-gen play, free DLC... Dude, massive fucking W for all of that. That is all incredible. I think I mentioned it in the original Black Ops Cold War reveal video that I did last month, I think. But if not, either way, mentioning it here, that that is just, like, that's amazing news. I, I think that's what everyone expected considering how successful it was for Modern Warfare. So, of course, bringing it over here to um to not just the multiplayer but zombies as well as the cross gen and cross play progression i i think from the sound of it the way they describe it is that um zombies is gonna have its own progression and multiplayer is gonna have its own progression like here's something for zombies here's something for multiplayer, which is how they did it for black ops 3 and i think 4 so that's nothing new and um yeah all in all, I have my concerns, but I am still looking forward to it. 
and um, we'll get another taste of the game, not in the zombies department, but in the multiplayer department on October 8th if you're pre-ordering it on PS4. Um, I'm getting it for PC, so I won't be doing that. And besides, I wouldn't want to pre-order it on PS4 anyways considering Sony's lack of refund option. So it's like, you're pre-ordering what essentially is a demo as a pre-order incentive when it's like the whole point of demos is that they were to try out a game for free back in the day not to be an incentive and not now betas have become demos like uh, it's 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 all it's all just sad that that's all just sad <laughs> like it wouldn't be so bad being digital only if re if refund if a refund policy was a thing with sony but it isn't <sighs> but um yeah that's um that's what i wanted to say about it mostly positive with some things that worry me but let's hope that this is all in all a fun mode to be had and that we don't need to worry about looking up tutorials on youtube for how to turn on a fucking power switch no i don't care about filling up a bucket to turn on the power i just want to flip a switch why is this so hard to ask? But, yeah, that's the video. That's the my thoughts. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe for future content coming soon, and also make sure to turn on notifications, set it to all notifications, so that you hopefully get all videos from the channel. And I will see you all next time, but until then, I'm out. Later.